Hello everyone and welcome to Storm Swords. This is round three. It's going to be between MCON and Suicide Solution. Now as you can see, this is an old replay, but I've managed to get the technical issues which I was having with the UIs loading fixed. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now unfortunately I'm not um, joined by anyone today, so I do apologise for that. Uh, I was going to have the Mad Drummer co-cast, but it turns out he is ill at time of recording this. So big shout out to him. Uh, at any cost, I'm sure I'll do some of the games with him in the future. But we're going to have MCON as the blue team on left side, Solid SMD playing that Rainer, Archu playing that Master Skin uh, Thrall, Praden team captain on the Malfurion, Diablo being uh, being played by Sizemas and um, sorry, Semiazas and Philiburk playing that ATC. Meanwhile, on the red team, Team Suicide Solution, we're going to have Kitani, uh, sorry, Kitani on the Vala. 1% on the Muradin, Slinger on the Tassadar, Team Captain Miagas playing that Zagara and Slam Jam on that lovely Royal Skin Brightwing. So both teams just kind of splitting up. Slam Jam on that Brightwing, an unusual pick, but that Brightwing uh, going for the phase shift build um, by the looks of things right now. So the team's splitting up and leaving Zagara to solo bottom as they transition up to top. To go against this solo thrall in Archu. Zagara's gonna have a bit of a hard time down here, but Miaga should be able to uh to power through. Creep will be killed quite easily though by Diablo and the ETC. So Rainer's gonna end up soloing the Val uh, the Zagara as we have a lot of damage being done to the towers up at the top lane here. Where all the action is happening. I do apologize for sound, I'm just uh checking that everything is working my end and it is okay. So meanwhile we have a bit of a fight here, Philippa going in, good getting good power side and face melt. But no real damage being done to um to suicide solution. Meanwhile, size just uh semi as sorry, just takes a lot of damage on this Diablo. Gonna get healed up quite quickly though with the uh tap of the healing well plus MCON support in the form of Praden on that Malfurion. As everyone knows, Malfurion does really good, just kind of standard healing. And with the balance changes, which this is a part of that patch, um, obviously the Tranquility's healing got reduced a little bit, and a lot of that healing power got put into his regrowth, so it's really nice to see a Malfurion pick up here. Um, nothing really happening down in the bottom lane, we can see the Thrall's health bar's a little low, so he's suffering versus the Zagara, as you'd expect, but the health uh, the health gain of Archu's Thrall should be enough to, uh, to sustain him. Meanwhile... Immortals spawn first of all, defense of the Immortals going out here for MCON as Slinger gets caught out, taking a bit of damage, we're going to be able to phase shift, uh, so dimensional shift and phase shield his way out. So um, team of Suicide Solution now moving down to defend their Immortal, um, semi Azas moving in on the Diablo, not quite getting stunned there, 1%, just being there at the front, the rain is doing some decent damage to the Immortal, just a little bit every now and then, semi Azas getting a bit caught out. Um, going to take some harass from that Hydralisk, but other than that, going to be pushed away. Zagara still sort of soaking. Thrall is absolutely still soaking, so pretty even on the split um, experience between these two teams. Not quite level 4 reached, uh, reached yet, and that uh, obviously is definitely going to be a point for both teams to then try and engage as Suicide Solution do reach it first, getting those level 4 talents just that little bit quicker, meaning they can be a bit more aggressive, but they're not going to. Philibert power slides in, 1% taking some damage, but the Immortal's there to kind of cover his back, just uh, do what it does. Now, all of MCON are in a really aggressive position on Suicide Solution's Immortal, and they're going to have to be pushed off, otherwise they're going to win this damage by Tassadar. I was doing some damage up to uh, MCON's Immortal in favour of Suicide Solution there, but not really that much, so I feel like this first half is going to go the way of MCON's side. Um, I've got a good amount of sustain with the Rainer doing most of the damage there, and he's got Adrenaline Rush, plus a Malfurion, who's quite low on mana, so we might see something come out here. Now, what I'd like to see is, oh, that's actually really good, we're going to have a bit of a fight here, semi Azas getting caught out, taking a lot of damage here from the Zagara and that uh, and that Vala, going to end up falling here to that last right click of the Zagara, so really well played by Miagas there, but the Immortals have swapped over, and uh, all of Suicide Solution are going to uh, to try and seize this up as quick as possible, as MCON have had to back up and aren't going to be doing enough damage, Furious Ping is coming out from MCON to try and catch us up. Zarchu and Solid SMD come in, getting caught though Solid SMD, and he's a lot of their damage, so this is going to go the way of Suicide Solution. Well played to them. Full backup from everyone here, it's just going to be enough to uh, get their mana back, 
as that spawns in. So Tastar didn't elect to stay in and collect both these health globes. A little bit of a miss uh, by him, but backing up was probably a good idea. Spent a long time not doing anything though, so Morphal coming back in is going to push this bottom lane. Gonna need defense, even though it's an early game mortal. And in the meantime, suicide. So she's just gonna push this lane, this top lane, where they'd already taken out a tower and a gate. Philiburk on the ETC, not able to get himself out. The power slide, not nearly enough to uh to keep him alive. Semi Azas doing what he can, but he's just gonna have to play a bit defensively. Otherwise, Muradin's gonna come in, stun him, and the Zagar and Vala will finish him off quite happily. So this fall falling very fast. The immortals already been uh. Already been cleaned up, and there's a root from Arfurian. Fort falls. Semi Azaz taking a lot of damage from the Vala. Gonna get stunned down. He's gonna end up falling as well. Wow. Well played by um, by Suicide Solution. MCON looking a little bit shaky. They've been so strong for the re for their other two games that we've matched, or well, other two matchups that we've managed to watch, which has been absolutely dominating. So may have found uh, found you know a match where they're gonna struggle here as they are down about half a level. Suicide Solution just doing what they need to. Thrall being really defensive here, Archie is not worried. Uh, you know, worried where everyone is. But as soon as he sees that that uh, siege camp is taken top lane, he comes straight out because he knows that's where the Suicide Solution team were. So MCOM going to be doing their hard camp. Makes a lot of sense at this point. They are behind and the hard camp pushes really, really well if less uncontested. But in the meanwhile, um, sorry, in the meantime. The exact same thing's happening over here with uh, Suicide Solution in their hard camp. So they're just going to go push their respective lanes. And their hard camp will be of uh, Suicide Solution. Should be cleaned up quite happily here as there are four members of the team here. But Thrall getting stunned, taken down. A lot of damage being taken, but he's going to be able to run his way uh, out of that mess with his Wind Fury activated. That extra movement speed certainly helping out there. Just having a quick look over the talent build and uh, Katami on that bar has gone for the uh, multi-shot build. Not something we tend to see so much in competitive play anymore but it's definitely kind of a more is it's an easier build to utilize and uh, I mean against a Diablo and ETC I'm surprised she's not going for the full auto attack build into that giant killer. Don't really have any other tank slayer so questionable choice there but the immortal spawn and uh, already it's going to be cleaned up here by MCOM for that first half as they transition down. Now it's a defense of the Immortals now. <laughs> as we go on, it's Dotai. We're going to have Creep cleared up, less lack of vision, but that Tasta Oracle comes out. A lot of good things there. Vala and Zagara actually out of this fight. So Murden looks like he's going to end up falling. He's going to be able to jump himself away, get some shields from the Tastar potentially, but he might have to back off and uh, tap the healing well, which leaves this as a 4v5, and he's going to go and do just that. But yeah, the Immortal falling quite fast. Solid SMD on that Rainer, able to do whatever he wants. He's a long range hero. Suicide Solution not really in a good spot here as we have the uh, ETC power slide and face melt his way through. Murdin just able to dwarf toss himself out as the Diablo in fact falls. That's a no, that's a 5v4 in favour of Suicide Solution. 1% going back. Not too sure why as his health regen would kick in soon. They should really just go to an aggressive stance on this Immortal. They had the advantage there but gonna kind of waste it or throw it away and uh, just go back to soaking. Trying to get that level 10 first. As they are almost there. They're a full level ahead at this point. As they get their level 10 first. They're able to fight and take this immortal no problem. So slam down with the guard. Going to get caught out here. We're going to have the oracle come up from Tassadar. Revealing the entire movement of the team. Including the thrall. As I said, Murden's going to get rooted. Power slid and face melted back. He's going to take a lot of damage. But that unstoppable dwarf toss means he's going to get out of that danger zone yet again. Slinger going to get caught out by the immortals. Stun. Not too much happening here. I'm expecting to see some more shields come out from the Tastar and the rest of his team. There's one on the uh, on the Zagara. As one percent's health is almost back up to full on that Murden. That trait is absolutely crucial for these long engagements here. As we see, the Immortal just being taken down. The Roaches, the Hydralisks, the constant multi shots and stuff from the Vala. We're going to have level 10 now. Four Suicide Solutions uh, get amazing Rain Avengers on that Vala. Gonna lock down and kill the Rainer. That's most of the damage of MCON. And uh, the second Immortal goes the way of Suicide Solution. 
Avatar was used, and there's Devouring Maul. Devouring Maul completely whiffed, and Avatar I don't think it's necessary, but it's a lot of pressure on the enemy team, and Devouring Maul uh, zoned them out very, very well, so nice use of the heroics there. Got Emerald Wind instead of Blink Heal out from the Brightwing, definitely due to the fact of having that Tassadar on the team with that amazing burst healing in the form of the shields. Going for the typical shield talents at level 4 and 7, so we'll see how that works out. Level 10 now hit for MCON as this bottom fort goes down. So they are down two forts, two immortals, and a full level still. Ultimate's taken. We've got Apocalypse here for the Diablo. And as we saw, the Rainer for the Hyperion. So not the Rainer's Raiders. Looking for more of that cover damage during the fight. You pop that down over where the immortal spawns, and you're just going to do a little bit of passive damage, which is really, really nice. For MCON. Now, this siege camp probably going to end up being taken here. As a uh, hard camp looking to be taken. I'm not too sure as to why they would take this hard camp as a timer. Oh, they've seen Vala by herself. They might move up to try and get her. Yeah, they're, they're going to bush. They're going to bush. This is clever. I was saying, there's not really much point in taking that hard camp at that point. And, uh, oh, Vala is very dead. Like, she's caught out here. But she's running away. She's creating space at this point. An amazing reign of vengeance there. The uh, Root's going to zone her out. And she's just going to go and uh, end up falling. Creating as much space as possible for her team to go and take the hard camp. And they'll probably end up pushing towards the top with it. The siege camp's pushing quite handily down in the bottom. They're going to go up here, take these, this siege camp to uh, go with their hard camp. Tassadar going to come through. Hopefully going to Oracle here. Spot out Archer and Prayed in. Archer's going to start this. Not too sure this is a good choice here as the position isn't great. Root should cover them from the Malfurion, but the Devouring more comes down on that Malfurion. He's in a really bad spot, looking for the stun. But the Apocalypse comes down the... Um, Mosh pit landing on uh, two. The face should come up. Tassadar is actually going to walk not quite all the way through it. So it ends up landing on three. And the Tassadar is going to get absolutely destroyed during that mosh pit. That's an amazing bit of play here. Emerald win for the disengage from Slam Jam. But MCOD, wow. That wombo, the Apocalypse came down right at the perfect time. As mosh pit just about clipped two. Eventually hitting the Tassadar as well. And That was a really, really well executed team fight. They only ended up getting one kill. But that's all they needed. They ended up getting the siege camp, able to clean up the hard camp as well, and that was a one fight. That brings them on par and experience now. Diablo down at the bottom, getting that split. And the Hyperion comes down for Reyna, gonna push the siege damage. The mortal spawning in the next 10 seconds or so. Level 13 coming up for both teams. 1%, a little bit down. Pro oh, that power slide coming through, stunning him after the dwarf toss. He's in a bit of a bad trouble. Misses his uh, storm hammer. Not getting that stun down, but the Vala and the Zagara are providing enough damage, enough of a threat to push him away as these Immortals do spawn. Kind of in favour of both sides. I'd say it's more in favour of MCON at this point, because they have that Thrall and Rainer. Real big powerhouses in the damage front, but I think it actually goes the side of Suicide Solution. Really even here. Uh, no, MCON do have slightly more damage on the Immortal there, so MCON won that one. And now we get the defensive stance coming along here. See what each team can do. They're actually uh, both kind of splitting off, just going for that a little bit. We're going to have... This is really, really good timing for the hard camp because it's going to push whilst they fight over the Immortals. So we're going to have MCON here take this hard camp. Diablo is just getting a little bit of soak as they both hit level 13. They've both got their 13 talents now. And we could potentially have this fight come down here. Reign of Vengeance actually not doing anything at all. That Maw landing on three is an amazing devouring Maw from the Zagara size mass. On that Diablo, falling really low. Tranquility coming down, keeping him alive for just a little bit longer. Not quite enough. ETC power sliding through at the face melt with the um, uh, with the Fissure. Oh, 1% on that mode and just about surviving thanks to the uh, disengage from the Brightwing's Emerald Wind. Tani falling really, really low on that Vala. She's going to get healed up by the Tassadar shield, so... What I was going to say with there was the Sundering from Thrall, sorry, in conjunction with the Power Slide worked really well. But that is going to be a one fight for Suicide Solution. Really well played by there. Just a whole bunch of uh, abilities going down. But really it's that Devouring more that, uh, that set that whole thing up. A little bit of miscommunication with the Force Wall there. Could have pushed them away from the range of it, but just about kept them in. So, wasn't too bad in the end. Mosh Pit is now up. I can't remember if I saw it up at the start of the fight. I'm pretty sure it was. Not used, and he did end up falling quite quickly there. So, hopefully, we'll see another good mosh pit in this game to come. 1% here. Brighton's going to come down. That's face shield. It's such a huge shield on top of the Tastar shields as well. Doing so much work. As they, uh, they go to. 
try and push with this immortal, but it's gonna end up getting cleaned up. The Hyperion really is that cover damage. It's gonna get a tower, and that's it. And that's really, really good defense from Encon here, who are again a level behind just after that team fight. They keep falling behind by about a level and then trying to swing it back, and so far it's worked out for them, but we'll see if it works for them for the rest of the game. So, bit of a party bush going on here. But, as uh, Suicide Solutions don't continue to push, they're going to reveal themselves and uh, potentially go and contest this. Not there in time. And Suicide Solutions should be able to get out of this without too much of a uh, too much trouble at all. Good disengage, not losing out on anything. Going to take their hard camp as this, is, this one is back up. MCONT is not up for another two minutes. Take up the siege camp quite happily. They're just dealing with the mercenaries. That's all MCON are doing. They're, uh, sorry, Suicide Solution are doing. They're just taking the mercenaries and then MCON are having to deal with them. The absentees, though, means this force can be under assault and a massive force wall there from the Tassadar is going to lock out the thrall. He's going to end up dying immediately. The Devouring Maw comes down on three. Apocalypse covering the retreat a little bit. The Tranquility is popped immediately. Praden trying to keep himself alive, but he's going to end up falling. Not enough. ETC blocked out by another amazing force wall. One percent jumps over it to try and disrupt the rest of the team. He doesn't do stuns uh, with his avatar. Remember, the Vala chasing down the ETC. Getting another vault forward. Another hungering arrow is going to finish him off. Meanwhile, in the background, the um, Diablo does end up falling. Going to respawn pretty immediately. And finally, that Rainer does get caught up and killed. Suicide Solution coming through. Absolutely dominating. They are level 16. They have that extra talent point ahead. They are two full levels ahead. And they're just going to see just keep the Immortal spawn in five seconds. They're going to be able to get this first half basically uncontested as there's still 10 seconds before the Rainer's... Well, 15 before the rain is alive and able to do anything about this. And that's one keep down, which means the Immortal will spawn in the top lane. Meanwhile, in the top lane, this hard camp that they took just before that fight has been pushing really hard. It's going to have to be dealt with pretty immediately. 1% backing off for mana, same as the Vala. In fact, everyone backing off for mana other than Slam Jam on that Brightwing. And he's just going to come up here and maybe do some Arcane Flare damage to the Immortal. Suicide Solution uh, at this point... Just playing it safe. They don't want to risk ink taking a fight without full mana and full health, just like their opponents will be at this point. Oh, we're going to have an amazing power slide come through from Philly Burke. Potentially could have gone for the Mosh Pit onto the Muradin here, but enough stuns on the enemy team to throw that away. That's a lot of the reason why Vala's taken Reign of Vengeance. She can just throw that stun down. Devouring Moor is now off cooldown as well, so that's another one. But if you land the uh, Mosh Pit on the Muradin and the Vala... That ETC is going to be in such a good spot. So many disengage actually for Moshpoo. We've got Emerald Wind as well, so... Really awkward uh, spot here for Emcon to try and come back into this. They need that sort of wombo combo, but I don't know if it'll, if it'll happen. They'll have to get them in like a co tight corridor. Sundering into Apocalypse into Moshpit is going to be the, is going to be the uh, formula here for victory. But level and a half behind, Emcon... Finding themselves at the disadvantage of this Immortal. Disadvantage in levels, but not in talents anymore. Philip Burke with that good uh, power slide coming through. But he's just going to get absolutely crushed down. We're going to have a really good Apocalypse coming out from Diablo. Pick off the Vala. The Sundering from the Thrall gets cancelled by the Amazing Devouring Maul. These Devouring Maul's been on point all game long. Miagos, though, on that... Um Oh, that's a Gara. Gonna almost fall. Gonna end up falling, though. In the meantime, Diablo has died. A good disengage. Emerald win. There's 1% comes through. Bouncing through just to try and disrupt the enemy team with his um, with his Dwarf Toss and his Storm Bolt. Archu falling very low. Slam Jam's actually going to end up almost falling to the Rainer. The Heat Shield's coming out. Tassar, the last possible uh, moment there. 1% though on that Muradin. He's not been focused down that much. He's just going to do as much damage as he damn well pleases. Slam Jam though very low on his... Uh, on his bright wing as Praden's going to come through, try and get the root down. Going to be polymorphed quickly though. So uh, really, really good cover there. One percent. The uh, Hearthstone going to get interrupted, and that's a one fight for Mcon. They did really, really well there to kind of sustain their health as etc Diablo have come back alive and they are in this fight or at least ETC is we're gonna have another power slide and face melt here and oh solid SMD is gonna get evaporated by that and another amazing force wall the force walls and the devouring walls this game from suicide solution have been on point all game long it's been absolutely insane the Argus coming through Zagara alive again Murden's gonna be mute uh, rooted but not gonna end up falling here he does have his uh, his stone form 
as well as all the healing in the world from the Tassa on the Bright Wing. Immortal falling quickly, but that Mosh Pit almost landing on two. It's going to get cancelled before it goes off, so not on full cooldown. The, t uh, the wall coming down, blocking out some of the damage, but that means that the Vala and the Zagara are going to end up falling from a really good apocalypse from the Diablo. Tastar's going to have to dimensional shift his way out, not going to quite... Uh, get picked off here. 1% on that Muradin. Trying to do what he can to finish off the Immortal. Not going to be enough. He's being chased away. Avatar up. Just going to be able to mount up and leave. And uh, and yeah. It's another one fight for Mouse Control. Who's going to do a little bit more damage to this Immortal. See if they can take it down further. They won that despite not having the Reyna. Which is a massive, massive go right there. Reyna having to defend against uh, all these catapults though. So it's going to be 4v5 when everyone's up. Currently, the Diablo is still defending. Should probably go in there, as you can see every member of the team uh, as the Muradin comes in now. So, Diablo and Reyna coming in. They'll probably end up winning this immortal. The Hyperion comes down. We're going to have the Mosh Pit landing on the Muradin. So, really, really good play there. The Roots knocking him down. He's going to Dwarf toss himself out over the wall. There's the Stonefall keeping himself alive just about. I'm really surprised he uh, didn't die there. There was so little health. As the late, late game, 20 minutes Immortal, finally goes the way of MCOM. This has been a close game so far. They still haven't even taken a fort, but this Immortal can, will absolutely change that. It's going to take a fort. It may even take a keep here. Sol SMD taking so much damage from the uh, from the multi-shot plus the Zagara. It's crazy how much damage those Hydras do. The shield has been taken down from the Immortal now, and that's going to mean he's going to start walking. Wow, this Immortal's health is falling really fast, actually. It may, even, it may not even take the fort, but no, it absolutely will. But that, look how much damage it does. Watch it chunk the fort. The uh, tower, boom. Half health and gone. This is going to get cleaned up before it even does any damage to the gate, really. Yeah, look at that. A third damage to a tower, maybe two fifths, and it's gone. Late game, Immortal got cleaned up way too fast, and uh, that means MCON is still behind. Only by about half a level if that at this point so really really good play here managing to hold on keep themselves in this game level 20 is the next goal though and suicide solution are going to hit that target first and uh, and yeah that's their time to engage them just pushing here with this with their hard camp with this siege camp pushing for this top keep and go for it they are able to siege up quite hard they have a zagara um, and they have the Tassadar for that Oracle Vision, the Force Wall blocking them out. Barlas is going to come through here, take some damage from the keep, but just start sieging it. With all the damage come down here, and uh, MCOM need to back up immediately. Their keep falls down, but now their core's under pressure, or at least will be. They're going to take this fort. This is a siege camp and a hard camp pushing into the top lane. And Suicide Solution just going to back off. Not too sure about uh, why they wouldn't pressure this with those two mercenary camps in, but they don't want to lose this fight. They have hit level 20, and they're actually giving their opponents, MCON, a chance to hit 20, which they do now, before they take a fight. So, hard camp going to be taken here. 1% probably looking to dwarf toss himself to safety over the wall, as he does. They lose the hard camp, but going to be able to disengage. Stormbolt coming out from the ETC, plus that mosh pit. That's now on cooldown for two minutes. Bit of a whiff there. Didn't quite catch them. Needed to do that and power slide his way through. Power side was on cooldown though, so bit of a misplay. Not too sure if Philibert meant to uh, meant to let it, you know, go into the duration. He he spammed it just to try and get them as quick as possible. Wasn't able to. Uh... They're going to pay for that in this following fight. They don't have mosh pit. I think that's a real key aspect of this slinger. Going to get caught out here on the Tassa. The mosh pit, the uh, shadow charge. But he's just going to be able to dimensional shift his way out. The Varying more plus the rain of vengeance coming down on the Diablo, and that's two ultimates used. For a Tassadar gank. That went unsuccessful. And now by the time those ultimates are back up. All of the uh, the mosh pits going to be up as well. Hyperion coming down. Uh, came down sorry. Did some damage. Covering that. Immortals taking damage. I think this is going to go the way of MCOM this first one. Taking a lot of damage from that Rainer. And the Thrall. They're just such big hitters. And yeah. About 3,500 damage advantage here. As they go to the defensive positions. This is this next big fight coming up. Some, some heroics down. Probably going to have the Hyperion back in time for this. But Sundering Apocalypse still up. As a uh, Suicide Solution actually moved to engage it got on this Immortal. They want this. They've got the aggressive stance. They force wall the ETC in. He can't escape. But 1% taking a lot of damage from that Rainer. 
Merton having to back his way up, dodging the stun. Tassadar didn't, but it doesn't really matter. Miagos on that Zagara doing so much damage, and now they have a huge, almost 10k advantage, 8k damage advantage on this Immortal. And they're backing up, now going to take the defensive stance here. EDC's, uh, sorry for that, a little bit of a technical glitch there. 1% just jumping out the force wall, covering his tree. He's not quite going to get picked up, but the Vala is dead after being stunned into that wall. Good mosh pit, but the Emerald Wind's going to block it down. Zagara might end up falling here to the Thrall as she does 1% backing away, as is the Tastar, but look at the damage being done to the core on the blue side. There's so many catapults here, it's going to end up falling. They can't get back in time quick enough. Fill about Hearthstones, but GG, well played. Suicide Solution, take game number one, both keeps down, and then count for the catapults pushing in those lanes. Whew! Hectic game. Mouse Control, look, sorry, MCON looked like they were just coming back into that, and it's gonna end up going the way of Suicide Solution. Intense game. That was so back and forth the whole way, but well played. Suicide Solution, end up taking game number one.